Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Nance Porter. I'm gonna try to make me a homemade jumper pack. Got a door last battery side post. I got some uh, some cables right there. I believe they're is that six. I believe that's six gauge. I'm not sure. It's pretty thick though, so it's thick enough to hold the amperage. Got me some um, Doorless um, battery clamps right here. These bad boys. And got me some screws. And some washers and lock washers. I got me some self tapping screws that I'm going to use as a drill bit instead of using a drill bit. Got an impact gun with a Phillips head on the end of it. Piece of wood so I don't. Drill into the floor. And let's see if we can set this bad boy up and try to see what we can do. Uh, I'm going to hopefully show you what I'm doing if you can see it. Let's see. So, first things first, I'm going to drill a hole. Normally, you will mount the wires down here, but I'm going to drill a hole in the handle up here so I can. Utilize these. Black is gonna go in black and red over there, and black and red, red and it's gonna go over here. So first things first, I I decided to drill. Or may I do? Maybe I do with this side. We'll see. Yeah, I guess I will do this side. So I'm, I'm gonna drill on this this side here. So let me drill a hole in this bad boy first. My Screw gun, or just put a small little hole in there. Just about hmm. maybe I gotta put the shank all the way down for that bad boy because I'm putting a lot of pressure on there. Let's do it again. So that's through there. Now it's gonna make it bigger. So I'm gonna make a put a bigger screw through there, like this one here. Just through that same hole I just put. So that's a big enough hole. I want to see if my screw's gonna fit through there. If not, I might have to ream it out wider. Mm. If I just come to this way with it. Let's see how that, how wide that is there. You don't want to be too wide, but you don't want to be too. I guess that's good enough. I think I can screw that through. But I got to start. The same thing on the black. I'm picking this side here. So I'm gonna use my self tapping screw first to get me a pilot hole. I'm gonna go right, pretty much the same location where the other one was, so go right okay. And I use my bigger screw just to just to open it up. I do the same thing I did the other way, just both sides. Okay. Okay. Now, assuming that the screw will fit through there, which I believe it will, next step I'm gonna cut some of this insulation off in the back. So when I put the connection on there. I, I was going to solder it, but I, I figured if I solder it, then now if I got to rechange the head or something, I got to do a lot more work. So I don't want to do any soldering. So just cut off the insulation. So we got a middle to metal contact here. Cut off all that 
You want to make it so it's enough. All I'm using is a regular carpenter's knife. Just cut up the insulation. You want to see like, I don't know if you can see that shiny metal there. You want to see some shiny right there. So you can see that, right? Some shiny metal. Let me, get it. Let me back this up a little bit so you can see a little bit what I'm doing. Just cutting off the... Uh, some shiny metal even on this side here you want metal and metal contact just where the head of the screw is going to be at just want to get some of that coming off of there just, just like that That way when the screw touches, it's touching metal to metal. Same thing over here, I'm gonna cut some of this insulation off so I can see some bit metal here. Cleaned it all off so there's, there's no insulation on there. It's, it's quite clear. So now the next step is um, I'm going to shoot a screw through there. What's the. Let's shoot this threaded screw. I'll put a washer on here too. I got a lock washer I'm putting on. I don't know if you can see that little small lock washer. I'm putting it on there. Then, then shoot it through. So the lock washer is going to help tighten it up. I choose to put it on this side, even though I, I could have put it on the other side. Um, let's see if we can do this. I'm gonna shoot this little right. Okay, that's in there. Now, I just my cable this is my cable right here Let's see if we can it just looks like a velcro so I don't want to cut this if it's velcro just want to peel it there we go take that off like that maybe use that for something else um, find the red wire that's very important put the red wire place it down just a tad bit just a little bit and maybe if I just tighten it down it'll, it'll suck it in there too I don't have to really just put a washer in the nut and let this screwdriver or, or whatever I'm using to do all the work just got the first couple of threads Bad boy, nice and Final 
I think that's tight enough. Okay. Yes, I think that's let's give it one more just for good measure. Okay. And if you really want to tighten it up, you can hold that nut while you impact the other side. It did exactly what I thought it was going to do, just pull it, pull it all the way in. That's exactly what it did. So now I got a nice strong connection there. Next step, I'll just tie, let's be positive, this being negative. I'll just take this, put it in the battery right here. And that'll be for my positive side. The only thing is I want to make sure that the negative and positive don't touch. Now in the future, I might add a switch to this. I'm gonna think about it, but right now I'm just gonna alligator clamp it like this, right on the edge. So once you have that, just put your alligator clamp on one side, just like that. Now I can tighten this up. Now I'm trying to debate which way I want the cables to face. Um, I thought about having them face up in the air like this. So maybe I could tighten them up with them up in the air like that. If I have to change them, I can always turn it around and change it. So snug it, but don't don't over tighten. As long as the cable don't move, that's good. Now, if you over tighten this, you can strip that out. So you don't. That's very key. You don't want to strip that out. Same thing over here again. I have my washers, my screws, and everything. I got a bigger washer that goes on the other side of it. So. You know, pretty much, you know, do it the way you're doing it. I already stripped all this off. Let me just make sure we clean it real good. It's cleaned up pretty good. I think that's cleaned pretty good. Mm -hmm. I got that cleaned off pretty good up here, too. And this is just, just to make sure I got barn on both sides. You know, you don't have to have it on both sides, but it's good to have it on both sides. Same thing here, gonna put my, just like that, stick it right in there. All right, so let's get this screw and this washer set up. Wanna feed that bad boy in there. And let's do the same thing we did for the other one. Just kinda, let's take your time. That's why the hole is not too big and not too small. It's kinda just right. Feed this in. Here we go. One. Keep it square. Okay, we're in there. Put this over here, same way. And don't even worry about where it's laying at because when you tighten this up, it's gonna pull it all the way down anyway. So as long as your washers on there. The most important thing is I want this to seat. So. Here we go, just push that down just a little bit so it seats in there. Mm -hmm. Now is my screw. Well, I see why. This thing is not laying flat enough. Let's lay this down a little bit more. No, I think that's Centered. I think I'm gonna have to just correct that just a little bit. And the easy way to correct that is just bend the screw to the left a little bit. Then put that back on and see what you got. Let's see if that sits down there. Oops. Let me flip this wire so this wire is straight. That wire being twisted is not helping. Okay, I just want to make sure I got enough meat to stop these threads, and I think I do. Alright, once 
I get this started, now I can do all the rest with the wrench. In fact, if I can stop this with the wrench on this side, I can drive it in with the impact on the other side, make it a little easier. Let's see what happens. Now we just gotta find a car to jump start and see what happens. Let's do the same thing we did over here. These are hand tightened. The main thing is you just, just don't want these to touch each other. Keep this flat side always to the battery. Okay. Now I'm gonna go find a you can do all kind of stuff. You can go hook your inverters up to this. You can put a switch on it. You could put a voltage meter on it. Um, there's a couple of things, so many things you can do. And let's tighten this bad boy up. It's not about over tighten. Just make sure it's snug. Don't want to be like tighten it too much and be stripping out. Now the lead is gone, you gotta try to re pour new lead and have a mess with mess on your hands. So, all it needs is the connection because the just the touching the metal is enough. So, once it's snugged, it's gonna make a good connection. You don't have to like over tighten it. Just to make sure it works, I could, I could take this, I do it real quick. I just tap it and watch the sparks come off real quick. I have to do some fine tuning over here to see what if I got a loose connection or a dead battery. But thank you for watching. Catch you guys in the next one.